Yeah, you can hear me. Yeah, yeah, I can yeah, match yeah. my voice and yes, amplify yeah. my voice. Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen. Bless you for such a wonderful day like this. You are in our midst today. We can testify to your presence here this morning with us. We thank you, Father. We bless your name. You've been asked, you're about to speak unto us. I commit every heart unto you, Lord. I pray that let every heart be receptive unto the word that you have given unto us today. Now, our lives may change. This we ask in the powerful name of of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Amen. Amen. So, hallelujah. Amen. Are you happy to be here? Yes. No doubt about that. I can see that. Amen. Amen. Actually, I prepared uh, uh, teachings for you based on uh, the uh, what do you call the youth program of last week. I shared it with uh, the Maclean youth last time, and uh, I thought I'm not gonna do anything extra, but precisely reminded me that I was on preaching this morning. I say, oh yes, I know. Okay, I already have message, so. But I pray. God said, no, 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 no. I want something different for them. Teach them something that I've laid on your heart. So I have to dig back to my Bible again and learn again. And He gave me a new word for you. Amen. Say it's for me. It's for me. It's for me. It's for me. It's for me too. Amen. Amen. Now all that we are doing now and jumping and screaming and shouting, eh? Where else can we do this? In hell or in heaven? In heaven. So, if you do this one and enjoy and you spring and sweat and you don't make it to heaven, what is the point of the one we did now? Waste of time, isn't it? Good. So, let me compare it to those who go to school here, uh, those um, university graduates among us. Seke. <laughs> you bear with me that if you go to the university, uh, I want to please come. If you want to go to university, where do you start from? Kindergarten. <laughs> you start from kindergarten. That's the basics. <laughs> Oh, no. right. so, if the for me, my destiny is not working. So before a doctor became a doctor, he went to the kindergarten. Then the day nursery, all right. Then class one. Top. That's the basics. Dalia yahu ya muskrayf. Dalia yahu ya depend with fast out. Then you learn what is one plus one. Two minus one. Do <laughs> You see, so if you climb higher, no matter what, and the basis is not good, they will repeat you, or they will sack you from the school to go to another school. Let's take it to building. If you want to build a high tower, and the foundation is not going to happen, it will sink or it will be break down. It happened in Ghana, circle. There was a bank they were building. The higher the building goes, the deeper it begins to sink. Why? The basics wasn't good. Amen. Are you following me? Yes. All right. So if you can go to heaven in the future, then your basis starts from today. So the leaders of the church gave us a theme that remain in Christ and his basic message. Remain in Christ and his basic message. That the basic is very, very important. Amen. So when Jesus Christ started his ministry in Mark chapter 3, verse 2, he said, Repent. Why? Because the heaven that you want to go is at hand. So what you have to do is to repent. Two key words I want you to take notice. The word repent means to change your mind. Maybe you have an idea, a conception of something that you have been thinking about. But repent means to change that mentality. Another one means to change from your sin nature to God's nature. Amen. Sin is Satan in nature. S-I-N. Satan in nature. So when you repent, it means you're going to take God's nature upon yourself. Because in heaven, you can't have Satan nature over there. You agree with me that? Yes. I'm teaching, so I'll give room for questions. Okay? Good. Let's go on. So the word sin 
What at all is it? You can come to church from Sunday to whatever days. Yeah? But when we say, don't sin, and you don't know what is sin, would you change from sinning? No, because you don't even know what it is. So today we are going to learn what sin is. Amen. Let's go on. So sin at all, what is it? Most people think that when we say sin, we are talking about the Ten Commandments. If I hear you talking, you come and stand with me here. Ten Commandments, that shall not kill, that shall not steal, that shall not commit adultery. Most of us, even me included, I thought that whenever you break one of these laws, that's when you are sinning. But there's more to that. Today we are going to learn. Amen. Amen. Let's go on here. Uh -huh. Sin means, move on further, to miss the mark. Sin, it means to miss the mark. This mark we are talking about here is the standard of perfection that God has raised. It's like a bar. So if I am not able to get in touch of this mark, it means I have missed it. Okay? Yeah. That's what the book of Romans says. For all have sinned and we have fall short. This is the mark. I am now shorter than the mark. So if I cannot lift God's perfection, it means I have sinned. It happened to our great-grandfather, Adam. God gave him something simple to do. Don't eat from that fruit. God set a standard. Was Adam able to meet up to the mark? Was Adam able to move up to the mark? So he fell short. That means Adam sinned. Now, this kind of mark that God set the perfect sin, Jesus Christ came and evidenced it. The question is, how? The Bible says that Jesus is the only person on this earth who never, who never. So if we are to be like Jesus, it means we should live without sin. Without sin. Let's continue. Good. Sin can be defined as, move on, you take your Bible with me, to 1 John chapter 3 verse 4. 1 John chapter 3 verse 4. I brought two different translations. I want everyone to pick his own Bible. Then you see that your Bible tells you something that you have been sleeping on every day with it in the house. But you just didn't know. The, NI, the King James says, Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. It doesn't sound so convincing. So, uh, please, can you read yours? Um, comfort? 1 John 3, verse 4. And then, when you finish the perpetual, you're going to read yours as well. First, and a boy to a uh, gentleman in the house, please, you can read your version as well. Yeah. 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. Verse 4. Whosoever commits sin, Whosoever, that means anyone, whosoever, me, you, whosoever, uh -huh. transgresses also the law. Transgresses the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is defined as transgression of the law. Which, which version is it? Thank you. Thank you very much. Who is next, Sister Perpetua? No, uh, Ophelia, I meant. Oh. Please read your version. Uh, I'm reading from the NIV. NIV says, 1 John chapter 3 verse 4. Uh -huh. Everyone who sins breaks the law. He says everyone. You see that? You included? Mm -hmm. You included? Yes. Me included? Yes. So everyone who? Who sins breaks the law. The law. In mm -hmm. fact, sin is lawlessness. In, in fact, <laughs> sin is lawlessness. Mm -hmm. Imagine they put a traffic sign there. Red, yellow, and green. Green means? Oh. Red means? Stop. Is that the law? Stop. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> Two mothers, so I want to say three. Three means stand. Come on, Mr. Manuel. Come Amen. So, the traffic sign, the, the, the robot guy standing there giving red, yellow, and green is a law. Yeah. So the moment you pass through the red light, you are broken the law. And when you neglect it, you are living lawlessness. Mm -hmm. You get me right? Yes. And the brother, please. 
Your version. Uh, I'm reading from the New King James Version. New King James says, uh, Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness. He says, Whoever commits what? Sin. What does he do? Commits lawlessness. Good. And sin is lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. So the moment you push aside God's laws and begin to live anyhow, you are a sinner. Did I write that in your Bible? No. I didn't write it. Now, let's see what the Amplifier says. Everyone who practices sin also practices lawlessness. And sin is lawlessness. That means ignoring God's law by action. Number one. Two, neglecting it by tolerating wrongdoing. See what the Amplifier says? You tolerate. For example, I know you are not married. You are seeing a guy across the street. Elder, it's 9 o'clock. Uh, can you pick me from my boyfriend's house? Because I missed the bus. Okay, it's good. Then I know what you're doing is not right. I drive all the way from my house to pick you from a. Okay, I can tell. Bye bye. Pick you from your house and bring you to your parents' house. Am I not tolerating wrongdoing? Am I sinning too? Yes. That's what the Amplifier says that you also tolerate wrongdoing. And being unrestrained by his commands. Restraint means anything that will bound you. Then you push that thing off and say, no, let me do what I want. So when he says, said, repent, he was telling us to get away from all this lawlessness. Am I getting some way? Mm -hmm. Now, you know, let's move on. Okay. The question at all is, why do we sin? Every day we come to the church, we hear what the Bible says. The Bible are the apps on your phones. We have it in our backs every single day. We know what is sin. We know God says we shouldn't say, but why at all do we sin? Who can tell me? Because we walk in the flesh. Because we walk in the flesh. Uh huh. Another one. Uh huh. I like your answer. Thank you very much, sister. Because we are born into sin. We are born into sin. Thank you very much. I like that one too. Another one. Why do we sin? Why do we sin? Uh -huh. Because we are imperfect. Because we are imperfect. Okay. But God says, be ye perfect. Thank you. I like your answer too. Thank you. Why do we sin actually? Why? Because we sometimes fail to control ourselves. We find it's difficult to control ourselves. That's why we sin. Last one. Thank you. We feel isolated from. We feel isolated from? From uh, good doing. For example, someone might be doing uh, bad, but um, the talks of someone can actually uh, bring the person down from being good because of people's perception about how bad the person is. Yes. Yeah. Good. I like that one. God bless you. Uh -huh. Me, man. <coughs> because we live in a world of sin. Live whereby uh, the ruler of the world is also a sinner. You are hitting to my next point. Let's clap once again. Move on. Satan, after he fell in the book of Revelation, the Bible says he occupied this earth. Job chapter 9 says, the whole world has been given to Satan. He's the owner. I'm the boss here. <laughs> So Jesus said, the owner of the world is coming, but he has nothing. So, Satan decided to take revenge on us. He does not want you to go to where he is coming from. Well, is Satan before he was here? Uh -huh. He saw the beauty there, the dancing and the chorus and the everything flapping and stuff. He know how, wow. And these guys, when I go there, uh-uh. So, he set traps, if he did, he set traps, those of us who have lived in the village before, if you have a farm and grass cutters come and chop your crops, you set traps there. Then I can't see it. I know this guy was a bush guy. <laughs> me too, me too. Bush guy. I've been in the bush before. Yeah, it's good to be in the bush, yeah? You learn a lot. You learn a lot. I like going to the bush. So can, I'm going to Ghana this about I'll take it to you. We go together. Oh, never never do. You go to the bush. Good. So he set traps so that he disobey God. He knows how perfect God is. He knows how close God to mankind is. So he will set a trap. So that when you miss the trap, God say, ah, 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 you are dead. Don't come near me. That's what sin does. That's why we sin. Please move on. Good. Satan is in charge of this world. Move on again. John, uh, sorry, Job chapter 9, verse 24 says, The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. Who is the wicked? Satan. Satan. 
He covered the face of these judges so that they may be blind to justice. If it is not he, then who is it that is responsible for all this injustice? The sin you are committing, who is responsible for that? Satan. He has covered your eyes that you don't see that what you are doing is not correct. Even though you come to church on Sunday, and that will spend time and teach you this. And then he will whisper things in your ears. If he is not the one, then who else? Your father? I'm not sure. Your mom? Hell no. Satan is responsible for all that we are going through. But it didn't end there. God knew he would do that. So God also told you what you also should have to do. Amen. Let's move on. Now, press again. Satan wants you to sin. Let's move on. If you want to sin, who do you have to consult? No one. You want to you go to the Heyman or HN no, Zara is better. You saw a nice top. You check your wallet, five euro, but the thing costs ten euro fifty five. Ah. You need this too badly for this party coming on. Mm. Left, right, mm -hmm. left, right. You pick it to the past karma. Mm. <laughs> Take the label from it. Yeah, they do it. And then you wear your own on top of it. Mm. <laughs> you came out to take your bag. <laughs> there you go. Well, Who did you consult? You said no one? Satan. Oh, Satan. Yes. Okay. Whilst you are looking here and there, you are, uh, you are taking his advice. Take it, take it. Let me check if somebody's there for you. You are yeah. consulting Satan because he's the owner of this world. Who has done that to one before? So, you take your Bible again with me to 2 Timothy. Chapter 2, verse 25. 2 Timothy 2. Who is there? I want this time, um, maybe my cat to read for me. If you are there, you read your version. Then we're going to read a lot so that you know the essence of it. Connie, you can read yours while baby McCarthy is looking for 2 Timothy chapter 25. Yes, let's go on. In meekness instructing those that oppose them, mm -hmm. if God perhaps will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's all. Yeah. Which version is that? It's King James, I don't know. All right. <laughs> Please read your uh, name, man. 2 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Timothy. I'm reading for the name King James Version. Mm -hmm. Yes. In humility, correcting those who are in opposition, mm -hmm. if God perhaps will grant them repentance, mm -hmm. so that they may know the truth. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Continue on further. And that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil. That they may come to their senses and escape what? The snare of the, the devil. Snare of the devil. Having been taken captive by him to do his will. Having been taken captive to do his will, Satan has set a trap. When the trust gets you, you are going to do his will. The honorable Samuel Peck, that is what you are going to do. Let's listen to Baby McCarthy. Oh, I'm sorry, please. What's your name again? <laughs> Lydia. Thank you. The spirit of all sin, you must gently instruct uh -huh. in the hope that God will grant them repentance, uh -huh. leading them to, to acknowledge of the truth, uh -huh. and, the, and that they will come to their senses uh -huh. and escape from the trap of the I earth. like that one. You see the version differences? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Please sit down. To escape from the trap of the dissumed. When you come to your senses, Satan has given somebody here Kadoche. Disobedience. What? He has given you somebody drunkenness and sabro. What? He has given to somebody fornication. It's a trap. What? The woman that every day you will pay, you are a trap. Satan says, Ah, on our show. From now you're going to do my will. Yes, it's happening. Leaders, church, Pastors, the whole world, eh? everyone. He can give, uh, what's your name, please? Gisela. Maybe. <laughs> Otherwise, no. He can give me, I would say me, the trap of drunkenness. 
If I go to shop and I don't buy alcohol, I can't sit. If I don't buy alcohol to my house and get booze, I can't sleep. That is the trap. So the Bible says he prayed for us that we shall be wise and get out of that trap. But when Satan traps you, he uses you to do what he wants. And when you reach the gate of heaven, God will say, did you work for me? <coughs> or you work for Satan? Then go there for your pay. Nobody works at Kabeze and get salary by uh, uh, Bank. No. <laughs> so the one you work for is the one you get paid. Amen. Yeah. Are we getting the same way? So we know why we are sinning. Let's continue, Iman. The next one says, watch this. Watch this. Huh. After you sin, the sin does something to you. The question is, what at all does sin do to me? You see problem? No, 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 no. Not only that. Some people sin, they get money from it. Eh? They buy good cars. Oh, yes. Yeah. They sell cocaine, they sell drugs, they sell themselves, their body to men to get the money. Wow. They get whatever they want in life. They feel they live good. That's true. Yes. But it does something to you that Satan will cover your eyes to that thing that you will not see it. The first thing he does to you is death. Romans 6, verse 23 says, the wages of sin is what? Death. Is what? Death. This kind of death is not a death that each and every one of you are going to die. At the end of the day, I will die. You too, you will die one day or the other. But this death is not this physical death that we die, but is the eternal spiritual separation from God. That's why I said, all this about jumping and singing, if we can't do that with God, then what's the point? So when you sin, the first thing it brings to you is death. Go on to the next one. So when you separate yourself from God, from heaven, where else will you go? To where? Hell. That's it. The second thing it does is, Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2. Most of the time, our prayers are not answered. You begin to think, ah, did, we, did I pray right? Maybe you did not pray according to the will of God. Maybe you did not fast. Maybe during the fasting, you drank water to sin door. That's why. No, 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 no. It's all right. Verse in the Bible. What does he say? He says, Behold, the hand of the Lord is not short. God's hand is not short. Too. If I want to reach a hostess, my hand is too short. I need to get closer. But God's hand can reach wherever you are. So when you pray for God to protect you, and the protection is not coming, and every day problems and stuff, it's not because God's hand is short. The verse 2 says, But your, but your, but your, good. What I said that, has separated us from God. Didn't end there. And your, and your, and your, what did I say that? It has hidden God's face from us. So when we sin, even in our prayer, God hides his face. Who is speaking? I can hear the voice of a uh, devil speaking, but I can't look at him. That guy is covered with drunkenness, with abuse, with sexual immorality, with theft. He's still too much. So I can't even look at him. Will my prayer be answered? No. There are two things there. Iniquity, what does it do? It separates us from God. And the sin will cover his face. There's a difference between iniquity and sin. I will explain that to you very soon. Let's move on. So what does sin do to you? Again. Uh -huh. Continue. One, it quenches the Holy Spirit ministry. Go for two. The Holy Spirit is the spirit that gives you the notion to repent when you sin. It's the Holy Spirit that brings you together to us like now we are together. But when you continue sinning, the Holy Spirit will just leave and say, my friend, I can't stay in this body. Amen. For example, you are not married. You are dating a guy. Okay. But you can wait and date, but don't mate. What did I say? Wait and date, but don't mate. The moment you are mating, not the trotter that I'm talking about. <laughs> mating means going to bed. Simple. We don't do that yet. Wait until you are married, gloriously, like how 
uh, Gisela want to do some 10 years to come. Uh, and then, when that one is done, the door is open for you. The moment you begin to sin with that kind of body, the Holy Spirit will not stay in it. Point number two, Bible studies become unfruitful. You open your Bible, you read, uh, nothing moves you anymore. Then you are drifting. The third point says what? Sin is very dangerous. So let's see. It robs us of our joy. You see the joy that we spring along here, we are jumping, we have joy in the Holy Ghost. But the more you are trapped into sin, you feel so bad to come to church. You feel so awkward. By the time you realize it, and say, man, it you. The fourth point is, it takes away your excitement. Your excitement comes from the promise of God. But the more you sin, then your excitement is being taken away. It's very serious business. Uh -huh. The next one says what? It robs you of your peace. 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 Breaking heart. I saw him in town last night, another girl. <laughs> you are. 14, 17, 18, 19, and you have broken heart at this age. Mm. What will you do when you get 45? You get broken brain. Yes. And it's when you're broken brain. Hey. 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 You see, you are a student. Seriously, with your books, and along the way, you get pregnant unexpectedly. What kind of peace are you going to have in your life? I'm not saying nothing. Yeah, it can happen. <laughs> And be candid, yeah. yeah okay. Hello. Hello. Hi. We stop talking now, okay? Amen. The first time I catch you, come and start with me here. Okay. And it hinders our fellowship with God. Every time it's church service, where is your friend? He's sleeping. Every day, when will he going to be awake? <laughs> then it gives everyone the suspicion of ah, this guy has been sleeping too long. Maybe his girlfriend is there with him in the bed that time. It's likely you. Or he went out robbery last night. He didn't come home on time. It's likely you. Or is he just being lazy? I don't know. I'm not judging him. I'm just, yeah, okay. But the point is, the more we sin, all these things are happening to us. The last point, please. So sin is the basic message of Christ. Amen. Amen. You lose confidence in your prayer. You pray once, you get no answer. You pray twice, you get no answer. Then you don't even pray at all. So gradually, the snare or the traps, or if you soon find Satan, they begin to grab you the more. Amen. Let's move on. So, are there different kinds of sins? Hold on, don't answer. Don't answer yet. Yes, but if you have a Every sin is a sin. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. That sin is the Bible. Is that true? Yes. Okay. Are there types of sins? Yes. There are types of sins. Types of sins. Mm. But all are sin. All are sin. For me, I believe there, there are types. There are types. There are types and sorts. Yeah. Okay. As you move on, we see which sin you are in. There are sins God forgives. Some sins He doesn't. Yeah. Yes. That's where we are learning. We come to that. Let's go on. The first sin we call it sin of commission. Commission means you commit. I am married man. If I lay with somebody else, I commit adultery. So what you do is wrong. Doing something you shouldn't do is commission. Are you allowed to steal? No. If you still have you, you have done what? Committed theft. A sin. Theft. Yeah, theft. <laughs> if you, for example, I see uh, air hostess shirt is around the neck up to here nicely. I go to, I'm coming. I go to Sister Connie. 
the church, the dress that sister Sandra brought to church. You come in go. Look at her. Look at her. Mm. I am committing concurrence. That's not what I saw. I saw different things, but I'm painting her black. I commit. Any question you say? Yeah, just another question. Uh, you said when you stole, you committed sin. We all know that. But are there types of stealing? <laughs> you commit. <laughs> okay. I said you want to read the next one. Go to the next one, you man. Good. The second one is sin of omission. We have commission and omission. Omission means something is left out. Omission means you did not do what you were supposed to have done. I've been sick for a week. Oh, by the way, I sent a message across to call Mama Mercy. How many of you were able to do that? I called Mama Mercy. You sent even a text message? Now, Jesus said, when I was prison, you came to look for me. When I was sick, you came to visit me. And you shall say, Lord, when were you sick that you came to visit me? He says, we said, as you did for your brother, you did for me. Uh -huh. Is that ringing bell now? That's why when I heard she was sick, I test all of you to at least call her. That is, by the way. Now, by not doing something that you're supposed to do, you have sinned. The Bible says, you need papa no wine and the You know, so this thing is the right thing to do. But you ignore it and you did not do it. It's a sin. Somebody's dog has been hit by the uh, uh, a car, by the roadside. The dog is suffering. You walk by the dog, we did not call anyone. We didn't even help the dog. There are so many things that we're supposed to have done, but we don't do. You know friends are sick. You don't visit them. You don't even pray for others. They are not good. They are things you're supposed to have done, but you did not do. You call it sin of omission. We are all guilty of that. Me too, you too. But today we are learning, right? I'll come to your question, please. Go on to the third point. The third one is... <coughs> oh, let me give some examples of sins of omission. Go on for the first one. Not being able to pray for others. First Samuel chapter 12, verse 23. If you don't pray for people, especially your Christian people or others, or intercede for them, it's a sin. The reference is there. Two, failing to tithe. If you don't pay your tithe, it's a sin. Amen. It's what you're supposed to do, but you don't do. It's a sin. Malika is there. Failing to help another person. Amen. James chapter 4, verse 17 says, You know that Eric, I know Eric needs money to finish his project. He comes to me, Elder, I think I need to do Oh, let me pray for you. <laughs> Meanwhile, the guy needs money. I have it. But I just say, sorry, have I helped him? No. Pastor, you know, my exams is too difficult. Pastor, pray for me. Uh, bring me the uh, uh, so. oil. Good <laughs> hey, 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 break open. Book, get inside. So then you fail. No. He didn't help you. You advise you rather don't rely on one source. Expand your books library. Go to the library. What subject are you reading? Come, let me show you here on the internet. Da, 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 da. You see that one? Let's have to prepare a project. You see? Then he guides you into what you want to do. Prayer alone doesn't answer things, eh? You got me right now? Can I go on? Mm -hmm. The last one is failing to provide for our family. Very soon, Eric is going to marry with. Uh, Choose one, choose one, choose one. Okay, with perpetual, for example. Hallelujah! Eric, you have a competition in the house. No competition. The brother. Oh, I'm going to take it good. And then, after everything, I'm here. Eric works hard, but instead of them here to take care of the family, use the money for another things. Gambling, 
drinking, expensive things, and the children will suffer at home. He doesn't do it. He's doing what? Sinning. What he's supposed to do. He's not doing what he's supposed to do. It becomes a sin. You get it at this point? Mm -hmm. So not doing what you're supposed to have done is a sin. Mm -hmm. Move on to the next one, please. Good. And the third type of sin is the, the most dangerous one. Sin of the will. Oh, boy, papa, when it down, stealing. When it down, you will just want to do it. So, you see this yellow envelope in the bag? I'm, I'm addressing your question. Willfully, hey, my man, to say, yeah, we say, we want you. I willfully know that this doesn't belong to me. And I take it to possess it to please my wishes and desire. I steal it. Another say, you said, if there are types of stealing, hold it. Sister Connie, please, can I borrow your yellow envelope? Because I didn't bring mine. I'll give it to you next week here. Yeah? I take it. Thank you. And I'm going with it. He asked me next week, Edda, can I have my card? Oh, yay! I left that card on the tram. Yay, 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 I forgot. Willfully, it is in my pocket, but I am willfully holding it from her. Am I still stealing? Yes. yes. Have I answered your question now? No, yeah. Not yet. I'll come there. Gradually, but I'm scratching the surfaces. So, if you willfully do something to hurt the other, you know what you're doing is not right. You think about it. You premeditate it and you talk, you do it. it become willful sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know that that computer game you are playing is naked. It's like acting plus error. And you are dating. And willfully you read it. You, Papa. Uh, okay, do it. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> and the man tells, door, the door of slot, sit down, take your computer, act in here, and you are playing the games of is willfully doing what you're not supposed to have done. We all have smartphones these days. It's yours. The phone is yours. Nobody bought it for you. Willfully, you go to websites that are indecent. You watch all those things that are indecent. Willfully, you are committed to sin. These are the basics. Hey, Sister Pep, is everything okay? You are willfully yawning too much. <laughs> Go to the next one. Okay. Uh -huh. Good. And we have also accidental sins or mistakes. It happens. For example, I am fighting with uh, Brother Eric. We had a heated argument. Oh, Madam Jawasan, Jawasan. And I just give him a push. Not knowing Eric has no stamina. <laughs> and then he tripped and fell on the center table and he died. <laughs> Hold on. Guys shall not kill, eh? I have killed, right? Did I do it on purpose? No. Was it accidental? Yes. So are there types of sins? Yes, this one is accidental. I didn't intend it. But if I know today I'm gonna hurt this guy, I know Eric is coming, he's opening the door. I hit the bell in my pocket. Eric passed by and said, oh, good morning, say good morning. The moment he turned his back at me, I hit his neck with the bell. Have I killed him? Yes. Did I do it accidentally? No. no. I planned it before that premeditated. So when you go to the court, and somebody kills someone, you want to find out if it was a murder or a killing. So we have accidental sins. Maybe you have developed pregnancy in the early stages. You did not know. You have had it. You took daffodil. Not knowing your blood and the hormone that not stand daffodil. And then the baby is aborted. Have you killed somebody? Yes. Was that purpose? No. no. So we have also accidental sins. Yes, it can happen. <laughs> Amen. Uh, if you read Numbers, let's go to Numbers and see if what I'm saying is correct. So there are sins God forgives, there are sins He doesn't. Today we're going to find out. I'm not saying because He forgives, you go and do it. But the law in this country doesn't know what the Bible says. Numbers chapter 15. 
Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. You have not read today, yeah? No. I want you to read today. Yeah. You couldn't lay him with Kunu Lazy, my shot. 1527. Uh -huh. Oh, wait. <laughs> you go to school with Abra. 15, who is there? 15, who is there? Verse 27. Uh -huh. Numbers chapter 15, verse 27. I'm yes. reading from the NIV. NIV says. But if just one person says, Unintentionally. What did he say? Unintentionally. Uh -huh. He must bring a year old female good for a sin offering. Okay, continue please. The priest, the priest is to make atonement before the Lord for the one who erred by sinning unintentionally. So the person will bring a sheep and the pastor or the priest will make for him an atonement for the one who sinned unintentionally. Why is that? A accident. Many are refined to it was accident. Continue, please. And when atonement has been made for him, mm -hmm. he will be forgiven. He will be what? Forgiven. He will be what? Forgiven. Why would I be forgiven? Because I did it unintentionally. unintentionally. But you know that your fringe won't in Victoria at 45. You walk from your house to the bus stop. You waited 30 minutes for the bus to come. You jump on the bus. 15, 20, 45 minutes, you reach your boyfriend's house. Prrr. He went in, everything happened. Is that accidental? No! <laughs> Don't tell me it's accidental. You knew that your brain was not good talk. <laughs> Continue for me now, 28. Number 29. 29, yes. One and the same law applies to everyone. Listen here. One and the same law applies to everyone who who sins unintentionally, uh -huh. whether he is a native-born Israelite uh -huh. or an alien, mm -hmm. 30. But anyone who sins definitely, uh, sorry, defectly, whether native-born or alien, mm -hmm. blaspheme the Lord, mm -hmm. and that person must be cut off from his people. Amen. Amen. Please read the verse 30 for me, your version, please. Listen carefully, yeah? Numbers, verse 30. Numbers 15, verse 30. Uh -huh. But the person who does anything presumptuous. Hold on. But the person who does anything presumptuous. The word pre means before. Assumption. You assumed it before it happened. Like I gave an example with the bell hitting an, uh, Eric's head. I knew this bell would hit a guy. I hit the bell here. I wait for him to pass me. I see his flat back. Uh, and, to <laughs> and I get how much he bang. Please read again. But the person who does anything presumptuously, whether he's native born or a stranger, mm -hmm. that one brings reproach on the Lord, mm -hmm. and he shall be cut off from among his people. Good. You bring reproach to God when you sin intentionally. And the Bible says we should cut you off. Not only the Old Testament, the New Testament says the same thing too. You might go on to the next one. Oh, okay. So the question is, our time is fast, but I can't finish this. Okay. Does God forgive every sin at any time? No. We just read it from Numbers. When you sin unintentionally, you bring the sin sacrifice and then it will be forgiven. So the book of Timothy says, when do not sin. But when you sin, we have an advocate, Jesus Christ, who is by the Father, who intercedes for us. But not sin that you know that you know, and you really know you know, no. And you know it's not, not that one, no. But the one you accidentally do. Please go on. Hebrews 10, 26. For if we sin, what's the third word? For if we sin, for if we sin, willfully means, Intentional, eh? What do you know now? Yeah, Willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remain a sacrifice for sin. Now, I'm giving the knowledge, I'm coming to you, please. I'm giving the knowledge of what is right and is not right. You know it. And then, you willfully dig it. I know Connie needs her every back because I want to steal ceiling type one or two or three. I will fully cut it. Whilst Exodus says, that shall not steal. Am I doing that willfully? Yes. He said, after you have received the knowledge, there is no more sacrifice for sin. For you. 
Let's move on. Verse 27, no, hold on. Go back again. 27 says, But a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which had before the adversary. Anyone who has rejected Moses' laws die without mercy. Do it says, Upu mercy is in You die, they will kill you. Good. Verse 29 says, How much more worse punishment do you suppose? will be thought worthy of the one who trampled the Son of God underfoot and counts the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified, sanctified among things and insulted the grace, the spirit of grace. That means when you sin willfully, he said that yes, was sin and you will stand on Jesus again. Then the end of you is the lake of fire. So sin is very, very serious. Especially willful sin, sin of commission, sin of omission, and the one that you think in your heart. David says something in the book of Psalm 10, Psalm 60. He said, If I have iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. When we read from Isaiah, he said, Your iniquities have separated you from God. What does iniquity mean? Iniquity means, Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's very dangerous. Nobody sees you see doing that sin. For example, if you see me smoking, oh, I am fatal. I don't know, don't judge. Ah, oh, Ada, please stop it. You have seen it, you can correct me. Or you see me dating, uh, what's your name again? Gisela. You see Gisela, that's why you're young, but the way they said you're fine. You can correct me on that, okay? But this one we are talking about, iniquity, hi. It's very dangerous. So if you have that one in your heart, God does not want you to come closer to him. What is that? That one, you have it in your heart. Against Shaki, if I see him, I'll kill this guy. Oh, Shaki, good money, man. I'm a scooter, Oh, wow. <laughs> I have that thing in your heart against someone. Eh? We are all here together. I have my black coat on. Don't come a man say, not issue, then you think. We call it iniquity. It's very bad. If you want to be a prayerful person, remove iniquity from your heart. Amen. Amen. You can go on to this one until you're about to close. Number 22, I think. One more. Numbers, we just read it. Go on to the next one. Good. So I share the sin unintentionally, and that shall be forgiven. Go on to the next one. And I've also spoken about presumptuous sin, you shall be cut off. Go to the next one. Good. So that's the question time. So anytime you are in a kind of sin, ask yourself, will Jesus do this? If not, will he forgive me? Have I done what I'm supposed to do? These are your basics to get up there. Otherwise, you can come to church and spring and jump and pray in tongues. You come down again becomes like a foundation of a building. You stop down in again. Amen. Amen. Question. Yes. Um, you were talking about the uh, murder. Murder, yeah. Um, so if I murder someone and I go to jail and I really feel guilty, okay, God, is God, is, is God going to forgive me about that? It depends on your true repentance. The same Bible said, the prayer of a sinner is abomination to God. A sinner means you sin, you remain in the sin, the next day you continue in the sin, the following day you are still in the sin, you are murdering and murdering and murdering. You become a sinner. But what happened? You are in jail. You feel sorry. You are not feeling sorry for the murder, but you feel sorry that you are in jail. The confession you are making is a true confession. When we leave you tomorrow, will you uh, uh, kill again? But he knows your future from the day you are praying. So he will decide to forgive you or not. By yeah. true repentance, he always forgives. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Question. So you said uh, when we sin, we die. And that death is eternal separation from the Spirit of God. So even when you change, you won't come back because it's eternal. Or... Okay, let me answer you. The book of Genesis, Bible said, God told Adam, Thou shalt not eat. And when Adam ate the food, what happened? 
God said, the day you touch it, you eat it, you will die. God didn't use the word surely. You shall surely die. Did Adam eat? Yes. Did God lie? No. Did Adam die? Yes. 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 He died. At the age of 930. But God said, I will die. I'm still alive. No. He died in the spirit. Spiritually, Adam was dead. He was a living dead. So, his dead state, he made all of us. So, we are dead. So, the Bible says, you who were once dead in your trespasses. So, when he says Christ came, he gave us life again. So, sister, now you have life. When you sin, you die. God, I'm coming. God is here, and you are dead. God will come and stand here. Because you are separated from him, you are dead spiritually. But you cry in your dead state for the power, the resurrection power of Christ to come again into you. That is what we call repentance. You, back, you push all those things behind you. Mm? And you say, Lord Jesus, I confess to you. I am a sinner. I know. The word confess as it means, oh, I went to my boyfriend and we did this. I am right. No. The word confession means agree with God that what you did was not right. That's what you call confession. I still connect your name. You have said that shall not steal. I went contrary to your word. Therefore, I am guilty. You can even throw me to hell today, Lord. You are right. But please, forgive me, why? I'll never steal again. God say, can I trust you? Okay. You give on probation and see. Because it is your habit, you go and steal Connie and Philip again. That's the last time you stole. You told me to forgive me. Now you are stealing. Okay. And I will give you another chance. Then you remain in it. You become a sinner and trapped in your death. The last two questions. Uh, this is not a question. I just want to say something to you. Okay. For example, uh, you said, like, for the ways of sin is death. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes when you say, we think that uh, it will take a longer time for you uh, to experience death, but you said, for the ways of sin is death. It's death. And uh, wages means something that you are paid dead. Yes. So immediately you sin, you are being paid Paid death. off. So uh, you get separated from God. And uh, Jesus Christ is actually the biggest, uh, the biggest um, mistake, not the biggest mistake, but. It's a difficult point because God is not in your presence and there the Satan can actually get the chance to do whatever he wants to do with you. And Jesus Christ cried in the Garden of Gethsemane because he was being separated from God, not God. because he was dying. Mm -hmm. you see? So when we get separated from God, that is when we open doors for other things to attack us. So the presence of God serves as a hedge around us That's that correct. nothing can, you know, can come against us because he says that uh, for the true sons of God, they cannot sin. Mm -hmm. It means that those who are in the spirit of God or who, those who are in the presence of God, mm -hmm. it is difficult for them it's to sin. sin. Yeah. So when you are being separated, so the sin actually separates you from God. God. That is the death. Mm -hmm. So as small you sin, step by step, you are being separated from God. God. Yes. At that point, you are being isolated from God. His, uh, yeah, His presence. presence. And that is the, actually the most difficult part. Yes. So when you are going through problems, you have to know whether you are in His presence or, or you, are you are out of His presence. presence. When you are in His presence, blessings. There is no way, you know, you you will suffer when you are in His presence. So, this sins that some little sins that we don't even recognize it. Mm -hmm. Step by step, we are being separated. So, yeah, that is the. Let's clap our hands. That shows that he was following the whole thing. He has summarized everything. Well done, brother. Next week, let me see you again. Eh? Oh, uh, I don't need this. You come. Don't worry. You see that. Uh -huh. So he has even clarified my point that I gave to you. Last uh, question. Am I gift? No more question. You, your question of how many types of ceiling do we have? I still can't get it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I can come again if you have something to contribute. To uh, due to our time, let me uh, just clarify a point. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, I asked other uh, types of uh, stealing, mm -hmm. and you gave examples. But let's say I'm hungry. Yeah, I go into a shop and I pick something to eat. Am I stealing? Or yeah. Not? Did you ask the owner? If you have the own the same question, they steal. Uh, do you ask the owner of the shop? When you go and ask them, they won't give you. But you are at the point whereby you need the food. So I experienced something. And uh, the police also came. The guy was set free. When you pick something from a shop and you eat it, it in the shop, 
they don't consider it to be stealing because you are in need. Hold on, otherwise, uh, you can go. Oh, 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 no, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not saying it's not the truth. But it's just something that happened that I wanted to tell you. Hallelujah. We all know what's right and what's wrong. So uh, this was just uh, to chip in. Hallelujah. If the Bible says if somebody steals to, I mean, quench his anger, we don't disgrace him. But when he has the chance to pay, he should pay it back with interest. So when I get to a wholesale shop, yeah, go through to your corner, but I don't have money. I'm coming to David, please. Can I get one? He said no. I call the baby around for money. Okay, but if you don't, in Nigeria, I watched something on YouTube. A child of seven years, he was burned to death for stealing garlic from the shop. Very, very bad. Seven years. The mother was not there. He came from school. Anger. He stole it from the shop, and he, he was eating right in front of the kiosk. The owner they put tire on him, and they burnt him alive. So here in Holland, nobody did that. Sorry, Belgium. Nobody can kill him for stealing food from the shop. But back to where we come from. Ghana, Kenya, So for them, instant killing, instant gratification. But time be to our Lord Jesus Christ, who bought all our sins on Him on the cross. Now you and I will not be dead like Paris Mobile will die. Amen. I hope you have been blessed. Father, you bless and let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you this very morning that you have given us the basics of your message. That we should repent, meaning we should change our minds. We should remove the Satan in nature from our part and fill the gap with God in nature. Father, we pray that maybe our strength cannot. We ask of your Holy Spirit to enable us to do what is right. Whether we are in sin of commission, sin of omission, willful sin, or transgression, or accidental sin, none of them are we supposed to do. Satan has entrapped us, but today you have enlightened us. Help us to stand well and be guided with your knowledge and wisdom that we shall not fall into his traps. This we ask through the name of your Son, Jesus Christ the Messiah, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Oh, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Clap for yourself for listening.